Welcome back to The Mentors. Mentors. This is Vadim. And Sergey. And this is our weekly segment called The 5-Minute Pick-Me-Up, where we tell you stories to hopefully motivate you for the week to come. We've been thinking that a lot of people have trouble with pushing, with continuing to push others to get what they want. And in particular... This is a skill that we learned in sales. I think we've talked about this before, but it's so important in sales to keep the person on the phone so you can extract more information so that you can effectively sell to them. And we thought that we would show you a segment from an actual phone conversation that we had to show you exactly how we use persistence to get an answer for how much budget somebody might have to spend on something. And in particular, this was a situation where we were trying to pitch to a school principal this idea to speak to an assembly of all of their students, about 400 students in total, about the importance of entrepreneurship and why it's so important to be a creator in this life. Actually, it was a pretty cool opportunity. It was 1,000 students, and I think it was 500 at a time. So we, we would give two talks. But before we share the actual phone call with you, which hopefully will be helpful since it'll give you a real world example of how a conversation like this could go. I wanted to convey that this is not natural for everybody. Some people are a little bit better at it. Some people is just part of their character where they don't really care and they're okay with pushing. But it's okay if that's not something that you're naturally good at. It can be practiced. You know, and sometimes even when I was on this call, I, I was on the call. Sergey is the one that's doing the talking on the phone call. But as I was listening, I felt a little bit uncomfortable too on his behalf. And I'm sure he felt uncomfortable too. But the only way that you can potentially get a yes is if you ask. And so it's okay if it's a little bit uncomfortable, but the results can be really beneficial for you. In fact, you'll hear in my voice, I was slightly nervous too, but I knew I didn't want to end the call without finding out what a potential budget could be for this assembly. So now you're listening toward the end of the call. In fact, it's the last two minutes of the call after about 15 minutes where we already talked to the principal about what we want the assembly to be. We already got him excited. He sees the value. And now my job is to close the conversation by getting some number from him. Here's the clip. For the last year or so as well. Um, just, just so I can get an understanding of this, because we, we want to be able to make sure to plan um, a time to come out and everything. Do you guys have any kind of budget at all allocated for this to cover their transportation costs or anything like that? We don't have a budget for it, but let, you know, we can definitely work some out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so... Got it. So, what what do you, do you have a sense as to uh, what might be doable? It's, since you don't have a specific budget allocated for it, as far as uh, covering some costs. Well, just let, let me know what you need, and I can, you know, a few. I mean, I, I really don't know, you okay. know, because what I'd have to do is um, we have a school budget, but that's usually for supplies and things of that nature. I'd have to um, contact our district office and see okay. if they'd be willing to support us. Okay, got it. Um, sounds good. Uh, and so we'll, we'll send you a proposal for what we think we can make work, but, um, is there, is there like a, uh, is there a range that you typically are comfortable asking for the district office? I'll ask for anything, you know, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, um, it's really up to, up to them. You know, if I ask for, you know, a thousand bucks or whatever, they could say yes, they could say get out of my face. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. the, the, the way I approach it is I'll ask anything because I think it's going to um, be beneficial to our kids. Yeah. And I have no problem advocating for our kids to anyone, you know. Um. Great. Love that. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. So we'll come up. Obviously, with- the conversation got a little bit uncomfortable, at least for me. I don't know if the principal could tell that I was fishing. <laughs> for I, think an he got, I think he was a little uncomfortable he too. Got it. That's okay. That's okay. But as you can tell, I basically tried asking the budget question in three different ways, right? And in whatever different ways I can think of. And this is where active listening was super important. Based on the answer that he gave me, while he's talking, I'm sitting there constructing the other way that I can ask the question. When he tells me that, well, we don't have a set budget for this. Uh, You know, it's something that I'm going to send to the school district. Oh, great. Then I can maybe ask something about the school district's process. And then later on, I pushed even more by saying, well, okay, is there something that you typically go with to them? Like, what would you be comfortable with? Really pressing him for an exact number. And only then, after three ways of asking in different ways, did he say that $1,000 figure, which, again, it's a very rough figure. He just gave me a number just because I kept asking. And at least now we could use that number to send him a proposal that 
wouldn't get laughed at. I didn't know whether to ask for $500 or $2,000. Now I knew that at least 1000 would be okay. This is a critical skill for entrepreneurs because remember, entrepreneurs, creators, we love making the products. We love creating the services. Whatever it is that we feel like we're meant to do, our passion lies in creating that. But for better or worse, if you want to reach an audience, you have to also do sales and marketing. Any author that writes a book will tell you that most of the work after the writing and the editing is actually marketing the book. Same with any artist as well. And so if you're doing the hard work of getting in front of people and scheduling calls, just like the one that you just heard, you have to go all the way, so to speak. You have to go for the close. And even though it's not comfortable, you're doing yourself a disservice. Since you did the hard work to present yourself with the opportunity, you need to Keep in mind that going for the close is probably one of the most important parts of actually getting what you want. So remember that this week, if you find yourself in a meeting or on a call where you're trying to extract some information about anything, about budget, about next steps, about what the other person or party wants, just remember, just because you're not getting the answer right away doesn't mean you won't get it. Keep pushing ask it in different ways based on the feedback that you're getting and you will get an answer. And oftentimes it's just about 90 seconds of your life, but the outcomes could be pretty incredible. That's it for the five minute pick me up and we'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs>